Next on BYUSN, with about one week left in the transfer portal period, does BYU find themselves currently net winning in the gained loss category? And do you really want to see the Zags on the schedule after this year? Well, Mark Pope does. Now, does that mean in the Big 12 or otherwise, Jason? Did not clarify, but uh, it sounds like everything's on the table. With that thought-provoking question, welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Wednesday, January 11th. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jason Shepard, who has been for the longest time. In fact, I don't remember a time when he was not doing this been a Big 12 proponent, and we're almost there, Jason. We are so, so close, and I cannot wait. On today's show, as has been said, the transfer portal giveth and taketh away. So with a week left before the transfer portal closes, is BYU football, as you mentioned, a net positive or negative in the portal? We will discuss coming up. We'll also have the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, joining us right here in Studio B to discuss that very question, as well as previewing BYU hosting number eight Gonzaga tomorrow. Not sure if you've heard that big game is happening. And the latest Deep Blue focuses on BYU guard Rudy Williams. Here are today's headlines. Let's go. All Pro Fred is back. Named NFL All-Pro as of this morning after a season with 130 tackles, which led the San Francisco 49ers. This is multiple years that Fred has been an All-Pro. Also had three tackles for loss, a couple of sacks, an interception, and a forced fumble. Is anybody surprised that this happened? No, he's the best linebacker in the game right now. Let's stay in the National Football League. Jamal Williams uh, at J Swag Daddy, the NFC Offensive Player of the Week. In the season-ending victory over the Green Bay Packers, Jamal finished with 72 yards on 16 carries and in the process set the Lions franchise single-season rushing touchdown record with 17. The former Cougar ended the 2022 season with 1,066 yards for the 9-8 and eight Detroit Lions. Remember Jamal. when they were 1-6? and six? Unbelievable. Now what a great and, story. What a turn. I hope they can truly build off this moving into next year. BYU football trying to build things as they add offensive lineman Ian Fitzgerald. 6'5", 299 pounds, a grad transfer from Missouri State at the FCS level. He started 29 games at right tackle over the last three years for the Bears. Highest rated offensive lineman at Missouri State per pro football focus. Welcome to BYU. Absolutely. BYU basketball hosting eighth ranked Gonzaga tomorrow night at the Marriott Center. The Zags have beaten the Cougars five straight times and head coach Mark Pope talks about what BYU has to do against Gonzaga. There's a price of admission to even compete in the game and you don't get a chance to compete in the game if you don't guard in transition. It's like you don't even get a chance to compete and if you can't compete with them on the glass you don't even get a chance to compete. So if you think about this team if you don't guard them in transition and if you don't guard them on the glass if you don't if you don't compete with them on the, on the glass you know, what, what are you even doing? You're going to hear the game live at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. Pre-game coverage on BYU Radio begins at 8.30 Eastern. You can sync up the call with the TV broadcast, which can be seen on ESPN. Former BYU women's volleyball star Amy boswell Yusevich has been added to the 2023 West Coast Conference Sports Hall of Fame class. boswell Yusevich started four seasons at BYU. She was part of that magical team that went to the national championship match in 2014 at middle blocker, a three-time All-American, top 30 honoree for 2016 NCAA Woman of the Year, three West Coast Conference championships, four Sweet 16 finishes, and again, that run to the national championship, well-deserved for Amy boswell Yusevich. Isn't she a nurse as well? Yeah, and she's like a 4-0 student. Yeah, Jason, so, and she's ridiculous. Yeah, she, uh, she's winning in life. All that? rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. What's Trending presented by Tim Daly Ford, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Transfer portal trades and transitions. Let's discuss. Jason, at this time, and we'll get into the nitty-gritty of every move that's been made, but in your opinion, at this time, is BYU a net positive or negative in the transfer portal transaction scenario? It's We're going with as of today, because as we mentioned, a week from today is when the 
This current window closes. It closes on the 18th of this month. So BYU has one week from today to still finagle things, whether you're bringing guys in. I don't think we anticipate anybody else going out, but I guess that's always a possibility. But, you know, getting guys in, you still have some time. Getting a quarterback was priority number one, and BYU did that. They got two. They got two. I love this, the, of getting Keaton Slovis. That was the guy I wanted as soon as his name was out there and available. That's the guy that I wanted. So I absolutely love having him in, in the quarterback room. So from that standpoint, I think BYU did make sure they, they – handled their number one priority in getting a quarterback. Okay. In terms of net positive, net negative, net neutral, is that what we're going with? Uh, and net even, even? Yeah, breaking I, even. I, I, still, I still will lean ever so small to the net negative. Wait, what? And the reason overall... Are you allowed to do that? <laughs> this, does not, this does not coincide with what you usually do. Th that's what I'm saying, though. There's still time to, there's still time to okay. change it. The reason I'm going to say net negative right now is I think BYU's biggest loss in the portal was on the offensive line. Losing the Barringtons was a big deal, and yep. it is a big deal. We obviously know both of them are now on their way to, to Baylor. So BYU, you know, depending on what the schedule looks like, they're going to be able to see them you know, up close and personal. I, I like the guys that brought in, one of which you mentioned, Ian Fitzgerald, uh, coming in from Missouri State. Um, you know, you've, you've got guys that... that Utah State coming in, um, Lapuaho from Utah State that has transferred in. I, I still think from an offensive line standpoint, yeah. th they, they aren't what they were before. So for that, right now, I'm saying right now net negative. But okay. Just, just a small degree. Okay. No, hear me out. I'm going to make a comparison here. I feel like as far as the trades go with overall what BYU has lost and now what they have brought in, and this includes Aiden Robbins, who, by the way, was just upgraded to a four-star. We'll take it. So now you've got Ciala Acera, and you've got Aiden Robbins and Jackson Bowers. Now you've got three four-stars that have come in recently, which is nice. Okay? That's nice. So we're, I feel like we're splitting hairs in terms of overall net loss or gain conversation. But to your point on the offensive line, I feel like BYU football has a nice house. They have a nice house with a lot of nice different things and trinkets and uh, weapons, if you will, hidden in there. Okay, they can, they can protect the fortress to a degree. But the security system is the offensive line. And I feel like we've downgraded the plan, right? Like we've gone from the premium plan, trying to save, save a little money, save a little money, <laughs> and we've downgraded to the deluxe level. <laughs> I don't like it. Okay, so I, I feel like BYU needs something more, whether it's a miracle that Blake Freeland announces he's coming back to BYU or something like that. Then I feel like, okay, we, we opted against downgrading to the deluxe plan and we want the premium so you're plan. Wanting, you're wanting BYU to go out and purchase like a Rottweiler. <laughs> what you're, something. Yeah, you're wanting something, a Rottweiler here. Something, yeah. <laughs> because from an offensive line standpoint, it feels like, yeah, the house is nice. And it's, we've, we've traded some things. We bought some new things. It's great. Got new sofas. Got a new TV. Great. Awesome. You need to protect that stuff. And that is the security system. And I feel like the offensive line, that security system has been downgraded, Jason. We need to bump it back up to premium level. And maybe that's going out in the transfer portal and finding another power five offensive lineman. I, I like Ian Fitzgerald. I like his metrics. I think pro football focus speaks highly of him. I'm talking about BYU going and grabbing somebody that was at a Power 5 school, yeah. maybe for multiple years, maybe from a school about 45 minutes north of Provo because apparently they've got a few available. Somebody like that because a three-star offensive lineman at a Power 5 program to me feels like a four-star. Yeah. yeah. Coming I, out of high school, right? I, I think from the offensive line standpoint only, BYU still has lost more than it has gained right now. Now, we still don't know how things are going to translate in terms of the guys coming in and how they'll play. We don't ultimately know what the Barringtons are going to do at Baylor. We don't know. But we know what they did here. And so right now, that's, that's the only thing right now that's that for me, is saying a net negative. And I also think, BYU Sports Nation, we've learned something about Spencer Linton today. Mm -hmm. Spencer Linton apparently is always going to say yes 
when he buys something and is offered the extended warranty. <laughs> Peace of mind, Jason. You know, you bought, this, you bought this very nice piece of electronics. You know, for $39.99, <laughs> you can protect this for another two years. Not true. Spencer's, sign me up. But when it comes to protecting your house, <laughs> okay. come on. You go with the premium package. <laughs> BYU needs another offensive lineman to get back to that level. Overall, I feel like it's, you know, again, we're splitting hairs. It's probably 50-50, just all positions. But BYU needs an offensive lineman. And I think they need another big-time player in the wide receiver room specifically. It hurts to lose Keenan Peely. I feel like Jay Hill and the defensive staff will motivate the good players that are back there. So that's a little bit down the priority list for me. But offensive lineman, wide receiver, just to give some, some depth to that position group are really what BYU needs. So, I mean, let's discuss. Okay, let's break it down. We, we've compiled every major player that has left and every major player that has come in. So, Jason, I'm going to read the guys that are moving out. Okay. You take the guys that are coming back in. Okay. First, you mentioned the Barrington brothers. That hurts. It stings. Campbell and Clark Barrington both at Baylor. Keenan Peely, I mentioned, has gone to Tennessee. Terrence Falls, now a receiver at Northern Colorado following Ed Lamb and company. Logan Fano. Boy, that one stings. This one hurts a Losing lot. Losing Fano. To Utah, yes. Dallin Holker, good player. I thought Dallin Holker was going to be an all-time great at tight end for BYU. He, now he's at Colorado State. Jacob Conover, quarterback to Arizona State. Gabe Judy Lally, probably going to end up at Baylor. <laughs> and then Those Tate, dang Bears. I know. And then R Tate Romney, legacy family for the Cougars. He has gone to Arizona State. Those are the major players that have gone out. Now we discuss who is back in. All right. We mentioned this right off the top. Quarterback Keaton Slovis coming in, a transfer from Pitt. Obviously, USC prior to that. Uh, the running back, Aiden Robbins from UNLV. Uh, the defensive lineman, Isaiah Bagnoff from Boise State. Uh, offensive lineman, Waylon Lapawaho from Utah State. We mentioned earlier in the show, offensive lineman, Ian Fitzgerald from Missouri State. You have your uh, defensive lineman, Jackson Cravens, also from Boise State. A defensive lineman Wyatt Daw from Southern Utah. Uh, just yesterday, you have the quarterback Jake uh, Retzloff, the junior college uh, quarterback from Riverside Community College. Yeah. Almost said uh, country club. Uh, and, <laughs> and then the, uh, the place kicker, Will Farron, who I will call Will Farrell multiple times, I'm sure, <laughs> also from Boise State. So those are, your, those are the players that have come in. All right. Look, just, just the list alone. When I looked at it and I said it out loud to myself, it feels like BYU is broken even. Just overall standpoint. Got to have an offensive yep, line. Yeah, offensive line. The Barrington brothers, I mean, Clark, Campbell and Clark Barrington are probably both four-star offensive linemen at this point. Don't you think? Hey, I mean, Clark more so than Campbell because Clark has had a ton of experience at BYU, but that, that feels like a four-star offensive lineman has left, and Keenan Peely feels like a four-star linebacker has left the program as well. Well, and here's the, here's the other thing. And this, I'm, I'm probably adding, a, a, I'm adding something to the equation that probably shouldn't be added to the equation, but when you're losing guys to the NFL too, I realize you're not losing them to the portal, but, but the fact that you're getting in, you're losing more guys, it makes getting other offensive linemen through the portal even more important, in my opinion. Blake Freeland hasn't committed yet. I'm living that pipe dream until I'm told that he's not coming back to play college football anymore. All right, let's switch gears and move to basketball. Uh, coach Pope mentioned yesterday that he and Gonzaga's head coach, Mark Few, are both interested in continuing to play each other even after this season. <laughs> Coach Few has been like, hey, anybody that will play me, let's go. So I think there's a chance we get that game. And he's talked about, you know, we've talked about that before. It's just like, hey, maybe this is something that we continue. I, I don't know when. We'll see. All right. After going to the Big 12, would you like to see BYU schedule Gonzaga? Hey, what's another top 20 <laughs> net opponent, right? <laughs> BYU's playing 12 different teams next year, 11 teams next year that are probably all going to be net top 50. Great. Throw in another. What's another one, Jason? I, I, I am currently not in favor because I know how difficult the transition yeah. is going to be. At some point, yeah, BYU Gonzaga resuming the rivalry that was formed in the West Coast Conference would be fun. I do not think next year is the year to do it. Maybe not even the first two years. Let BYU breathe a little bit and acclimate to what is already going to be ridiculously hard in the Big 12 before you bring in a non-conference series with Gonzaga. I'm fine if BYU essentially makes it a cupcake non-con schedule outside of 
uh, you play Utah State and Utah. I want all the in-state games to remain. I think those are fun. I think those make sense. It's easy travel. It doesn't cost the programs a lot of money. There's histories there. So give me every in-state team for BYU within the Beehive State and then go and get a bunch of mid-tier to lower-tier non-conference games because you don't need Gonzaga on the schedule. Right. You don't need so Gonzaga does it, on the schedule. Does it change your opinion one way or the other if it's a home-and-home home or – Say if it's or maybe if it's a neutral site game, does it change your opinion on whether you you would prefer it or not? I would actually prefer a neutral site game, uh, the home and oh, home. Really? Yeah, okay. the home and home. Like, I've done it enough, and BYU's going to have enough big home games right. in the Big Twelve and enough tough road games in the Big Twelve. Neutral site game is where I would lean for BYU and Gonzaga. So sure. yeah, I mean, like overall, I'm, I think I'm with you. Right now, I'm perfectly fine to not see Gonzaga for a while. Uh, simply because of what BYU is about to undertake going into the Big 12. We know how difficult it is. We well, know what yes. type of, of conference that is in terms of basketball. What's the benefit? Tell me that. What's the benefit right now of having Gonzaga on the schedule as BYU transitions Look, it, to the It's Big like 12? when you have like a really, really good piece of chocolate cake, and it's like, it's like three different layers of chocolate, and you love chocolate. Sure. You have three layers. It's the best thing. Is it? Going to be even better with four layers? No, it's too much Pro at that it's point. It's probably too much. I can't finish it. It's too rich, <laughs> too sweet. Now this is too much. Yeah. Like I love, now I love I Gonzaga's cake. program. Great. I think that they are an absolutely unbelievable team, and it's been a fun rivalry yeah. series. It's just too much at this point. Give me a neutral site game a couple of years after BYU gets into the big. Yeah, game. maybe if you do it, you do it like once every three years, something like that. It's not like it's an every year thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine know, seeing the rivalry game at some point, yeah. but not every year, and certainly not in a home-and-home -home scenario. Yeah, need a little bit of a breather, in my opinion, from Gonzaga for a while. Yes. And then watch, they'll just join the conference, and then it's, it's going to happen anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's also a possibility. <laughs> All right, we talked football and a little bit of basketball. Our question of the day focusing in on the football side and the transfer portal specifically. Do you feel BYU football is a net positive or negative in the transfer portal right now? At Sam Emery 89 on Twitter answers, the quarterback additions alone make it a net positive. BYU has a quarterback for this year and appeared to have a plan for the next few years, courtesy of transfers coming in. Plus great additions on the offensive line, defensive line, and running back positions should offset some of those bigger losses. I feel like overall it's broken even, but I still want that offensive lineman, Jason. Give me that offensive lineman. You got a week. You got one more week. Then we have a net gain. Yes, there you go. That's what I'm looking for. I like the way you're thinking. Hashtag BYUSN, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to join the conversation. Catch BYU basketball with Mark Pope on demand with Greg Rubel, the coach, and Jackson Robinson. You can watch it on demand on BYUSN.com or the BYU TV app. Yeah, we've been talking about protecting the house. Well, coming up next, the man who protects the brand, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, with us on the show. Does he feel like the transfer portal has been a net gain or a net loss? This is BYU Sports Nation. Can I have that jacket, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> this portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. When BYU made such a difference in our lives, I think really helped mold us as to, as to who we are. And so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter, we thought, okay, that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in. We want to promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region. We want people who leave BYU to still stay connected.
As we've spent time working with so many groups around the world, we've learned a lot. I have really learned the importance of gratitude. African electrical systems. Well, I've learned that Kieran actually loves concrete. The power of cooperation. But above all, we've learned the world is a family. And fixing someone else's problems ends up fixing my own. A sellout crowd expected in the Marriott Center for Gonzaga and BYU tomorrow night. Welcome back to Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play -play on BYU Sports Nation. I'm Spencer Linton. This is Jason Shepard. We're protecting the house and protecting the brand, as I mentioned, with the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, joining us in Studio B. Greg, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Good morning. It is a good morning. Yeah. It's always good to talk with you. And before we get to basketball, we were just talking about the transfer portal for BYU football specifically. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's essentially broken even at this point. Are you feeling like BYU is a net gain, a net loss at this point in the transfer portal? It feels kind of even right now with TBD. We don't really know until we've seen them, you know, perform how it all turns out. But it feels like BYU's done pretty well. Uh, I, I, you know, those are two huge offensive line losses. I mean, the Barrington brothers were, were big gets when BYU got them. And I think there was even more excitement for, for Campbell that, than for Clark, who was great in his own right. And, and to lose Bowles is a blow. Um, and, and, you know, besides the losses you'll have to graduation or to the draft, uh, sure. you lose a lot of the O-line. Now BYU's gone and found some O-linemen, right? They, they've, at least, uh, they've at least picked up two. Um, who knows if there's more to come, but it, uh, they, they hit a need there. Uh, clearly they had to hit quarterback, and they did that. Um, yeah, it feels like BYU did about as well as they could do for the time being, and let's see how it all shakes out. So in terms of, of needs, because we mentioned there's still – another week left of this window, then there's one that opens up after spring. So you have opportunities still to be able to, to maneuver around. But in terms of needs, is, is it solely focused on the offensive line right now? Or is there, is there another area that, that you would, would look at and say, hey, maybe that's something to identify? I don't know. It feels to me like O-line depth probably needs the most work right now. Because you, you didn't just lose starters. You lost, you know, there, there, there's some depth issues as well uh, behind the top five. They had, they had a really good top seven, eight last year, I thought. Um, so probably there. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what Jay Hill has in mind uh, in terms of what he really thinks he needs on the defensive side of the ball. I think, you know, Kelly Papinga bringing a couple of Boise State players uh, down from the D-line uh, where he had a pretty um, solid overview last year um, shows that that's already paid some dividends. Um, yeah, I, I think BYU is in a pretty solid spot right now. Sure. Let's talk quarterbacks. Jake yeah. Retzloff is in from Riverside Community College, number one JUCO quarterback in the state of California. What do you think of the BYU quarterbacks room now with Keaton Slovis? Probably the number one, and then Jake Retzloff brought in to push him and then maybe right. be the guy for the future. I think that's exactly how, it's, how you just spelled it out as what they're expecting. You don't bring in Keaton Slovis without the expectation of him being your guy, clearly. Um, but uh, but Retzlaff is able to, A, provide competition, and, and B, provide a safety net, just something go awry uh, with Keaton Slovis uh, in this next year. And then, you know, the way the redshirt rules work now, um, he could even play in games and still be available for two more years after that. And, and so you have a solid guy with a lot of reps behind him. Um, so, yeah, losing your top two quarterbacks, if you will, although, you know, Jacob wasn't getting reps. It was all Jaron last year. Losing your top two and bringing in two guys with as many reps as you've got um, at, at, you know, at, at either the high, you know, D1, P5 level or even at JUCO, just the numbers themselves speak for themselves. I think BYU is in good shape there, too. In terms of looking ahead to next year and obviously these are everybody's coming out with their way too early prediction so let's <laughs> let's let's jump aboard that train um not necessarily wins and losses but with what we've seen come in in the portal you know the the signing class the new defensive coaches what do you make of the group today that will go into the big 12 I, I'd be ecstatic with a winning record for BYU next year. Amen. In, in the first year in the Big 12, really. Um, you never want to set you know, too low a bar, but I think really, uh, considering the losses you have, uh, breaking a new quarterback, although he's got experience as a new quarterback for BYU, um, you know, the, the, those connections take some time to solidify between uh, coordinator and, and quarterback and, and game plan and fit and all that. So if BYU were to find a way to get a winning record next year, the first year in the Big 12, I think that would be a huge success. Do you have any hot takes you'd like to add? How was our conversation yesterday? 
Yeah, the, 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 the older I get, the colder my takes get, I, I think. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I'll go out on a limb. I'll, I'll uh, carry that branch out. I, I, okay. You know, and, and maybe at my age, it's great to still be able to be this excited about something. But I, I just, just uh, the Big 12 era um, just really gets me going. I, I, I just, I'm, I'm so excited to get into a, a new situation, be back in a league again where, where the yes. competition uh, you know, builds and grows in enthusiasm and intensity week to week and year to year. Uh, rivalries form. Uh, familiarity uh, becomes a factor between staffs and styles of play. And, and, and the notion of playing for something is always, uh, is, is always going to be a great motivator for these guys. Uh, the bowl games get better. Uh, the stage gets bigger. The lights get brighter. And BYU's been in a pretty good spot. I mean, for 12 years of independence, BYU kept a pretty high profile. And, and so credit to the program and everything that went into it to keeping BYU relevant so that it made sense for BYU to be a Big 12 team after all of this. But uh, I, I think it's going to be great. New venues and new associations and a whole new vibe. Uh, I feel really blessed. Uh, you know, when I, when I broke into this, uh, BYU was in the WAC. And from the WAC to the Mountain West, from the Mountain West to Independence, the Independence to Big 12. So four different uh, configurations you know, over the career that I've been able to cover the Cougs. And in basketball, similarly, whacked Mount West to WCC to Big 12. Pretty four wild. conferences. Uh, so BYU's been a lot of bouncing, done a lot of bouncing around and, and found success at every level. And to be able to move to an even higher uh, plane is, is really exciting. Listen, Ames, Stillwater, <laughs> Lubbock, and Morgantown await, Greg. Yes. And, and believe me, I, I, I've been going through uh, all the travel options for next year. <laughs> Who flies where, where to stay, it's all happening. Yeah. What I'm really hoping is that uh, when BYU plays at Central Florida, that we get like Greg and like mouse ears, <laughs> like at Disneyland with the crew. Like I'm hoping we get some of those picks. Are you, do you call yourself a Disney guy, by the way? Uh, used to be. I think I'd say uh, the, the older the kids got, the less of a Disney guy I became uh, to where it's more like, oh, is the line really going to be that long? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to sit here. You guys go have fun. All right, so, so let's switch gears and talk some basketball because there is a big game coming up. Um, mm -hmm. Before we get to specifically the game, we were talking, we played a quote uh, from Coach Pope where he said that he and, and Coach Few are, are certainly both – uh, open to the idea of continuing yeah. to play after this year. Would you like to see that happen? Sure. Um, you know, when, when you leave the West Coast Conference, you leave most of those teams behind. But the two teams that will always have perennial value for you, uh, for your resume, are going to be Gonzaga and St. Mary's. And, and how often BYU wants to go back to Moraga, Ma, Moraga I'm not so sure. Uh, that's been the t that's in what fact, I'm saying. Moraga's been tougher than Spokane, yes. historically. Well, and they BYU. won't leave the state of California for a non-conference. So, <laughs> so the chance, I, I, I'm probably more likely with Gonzaga than St. Mary's right now. But either way, you know, Gonzaga's always going to be a great game. Uh, and, and, yeah, the schedule will be tough enough in the Big 12. You're not going to want to load your non-conference, right? Yeah. But you're, you're still going to have some resume high points every year uh, in non-con, and Gonzaga would be a natural. And, and, and then beyond that, um, anywhere in, in California, anywhere that keeps kind of that West Coast vibe with, with BYU fan base that have been so supportive of BYU in the WCC days, I think it would be great to have as well. Maybe I'm a party pooper. I don't know. I, but for the first two years, I just feel like BYU, because the transition is going to be so tough. Yeah, it may not be right away well. this happens. Yeah. But, but I, I think, I think long-term, Coach Few and Coach yeah. Pope will always sure. try and keep each I, other. I'm okay with yeah. that. I just, I just want a little break. Yeah, I feel, I, feel like, I feel like it's a Ross and Rachel situation. They need to take a break. <laughs> just need a break. And let's also remember that the Big 12 is going to be involved in these interconference challenges every year. Those will obviously be resume high points. every. You, you'll, you'll have those points already. But Gonzaga will always be a great game for BYU to have. As far as tomorrow's game goes, BYU's metrics in the net, they're better than they have been. Number 89 last I saw. I haven't 88 this today. Morning. 88, so they yeah. jumped up one spot as yeah. of this morning. 75 in Ken Palm last I saw as well. Those are decent metrics. The yeah. UVU uh, the UVU loss moved into Q2, for example. So BYU has in Q3 and Q4 right now just the one South Dakota setback. That will be the blemish. Good teams have... One, you know, they, a lot of good teams have that bad game that shows up. Hasn't been that way for BYU. They had one last year, have one this year. Uh, UVU is actually turning out to be not a bad loss at all, the way it turns out. Uh, yeah, the, what, what, a, what a win would do, um, you'd have a winning record in Q1 all of a sudden. Uh, was win -win, and, and, you'd, and you'd be closer to 500 in Q1 and Q2. I think a team that beats Gonzaga with the resume BYU already has is at least an NIT team. I think what it does is it kind of, it kind of assures that BYU can think about postseason very realistically, uh, with still, you know, uh, higher hopes beyond that. But, uh, yeah, it would be good in a lot, great in a lot of ways, obviously. 
yesterday I interviewed uh, Foose for radio pregame, right. and we were talking about, obviously, the game, and he brought up how the matchup with Drew Timmy last year really affected him. Like, like Timmy had <laughs> such a great game. He, he just said, I, that, that performance has, has stayed with me, and he's used that as motivation and looking forward to this matchup. It feels like Drew Timmy's been there for about 13 years. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of the, of the matchup against him specifically um, in this? Because he, he's just an absolute terror. Yeah, well, Fafoos is not alone in that feeling. Uh, there are a <laughs> lot of really good post players in college basketball who are dealing with uh, PTSD, the T for Timmy in this case. Uh, post Timmy stress disorder. <laughs> and, and, and so, yeah. The real thing. He's, he's probably in good company. Yeah. But, he, you know, I think Mark, Mark said it. Mark Pope said it in his media availability, availability yesterday. Um, I don't know that anyone's had a good answer exactly to how it is you handle Drew Timmy. Uh, Gonzaga's all but unbeatable when he scores even just 20 points, which is kind of an average game for him. I think they're, what, 36, no, they're 36 and 3 maybe when he scores 20 or more. It's a crazy number. Uh, and crazy numbers are what kind of Gonzaga specializes in right now. They, they, you know, they have 91 straight wins over unranked teams. Um, you know, they, they've, they've even won 34 straight games in January. They don't lose in it. This is their best month. Of all the months they play in, January is their best month. And it's interesting because January is when you assert yourself in your league, right, and, sure. and put yourself beyond everybody else and say we're going to do it again, which they've always done. Uh, one of the craziest numbers Gonzaga's got going for it, they lost to San Diego at San Diego nine years ago, okay, almost a decade ago. They <laughs> lost at USD. Since then, they're 115 and 0 against every other West Coast Conference team <laughs> except St. Mary's and BYU. So they will lose to, to the league's best teams occasionally, meaning since St. Mary's and BYU, but they won't lose to anyone else ever. That's why they just continue to run this league. They never, ever slip up. Again, St. Mary's and BYU will give yeah. them good games, and occasionally they'll drop one very rarely. But other than that, forget about it. And that's where everyone else has issues. And Gonzaga got pushed to the limit last week against two non-St. Mary's BYU Double teams. Double-digit deficits in both games. Yeah. What happens in the end, though? There they are. They win. Yep. They find a way. And BYU knows the heartache. You know, a 14-point lead uh, in Vegas, things couldn't have been going any better. And in a span, a span of about five minutes, the game turned and flipped, and, and that was that. They were a remarkable program, playing ahead, playing from behind. And again, the rarity of the last couple games is they have spent so much time trailing. That's not normal for them. And, and it's all a matter of degrees, right? But you, you look at Gonzaga from last year to this, they're not the one or two team. They're only the number eight team. Yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, they're not scoring as much. Uh, they're allowing a few more points, but they're still the top shooting team in all college basketball. They're still top 10 in scoring. So again, it's really a matter of degrees in terms of is this as good as, as, as other great Gonzaga teams? Maybe just a little off. But a little off still means a great Gonzaga pro. They've won nine in a row yeah, coming into nine, this game. Well, the three losses, all ranked teams, Texas, Purdue, and Alabama. Yeah, and, and, since, they, and, <laughs> and since the NCAA yeah. went to the quadrants, they don't have anything other than Q1 losses. Yeah. Right? They've never had anything as much as even a Q2 loss, I don't believe. So uh, they've been perfect in you know, where they need to be. And so in every way, they're just a juggernaut. Great stuff, Greg. Good to talk football and basketball with you. Don't Always give Jason the jacket for that matter. I, I'll, okay? I'll take. No, I'll, I'll have it waiting in your office. <laughs> Ooh. You, you, I mean, you can wear it for the day. Oh, yeah. just for the day. <laughs> can <I> have it. <laughs> you can borrow it. <laughs> uh, can I? Is there a lease to? Is there a lease to own option? Is yeah, that should, possible? Rent a swag. Yes. I think. I think it's been done. Yes, it's it been has. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Great Jason, show. Thirty bucks a month. You can. You can have anything you want in Greg's closet for the day. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna treat myself. Okay. All right, All right. I, I, Jason. I've already got a Christmas gift idea for next year. So. <laughs> Very nice. All right, listen live as BYU hosts eighth-ranked Gonzaga tomorrow night in the Marriott Center. Pre-game coverage begins at 8.30 Eastern time on BYU Radio and the BYU Radio app. You know those guys that inflate with air in the rock that they use to distract free throw shooters? The tube guys? They need names. That's what call. So we're going to discuss potential names for those guys. The tube guys. Up next on BYU Sports Nation. We've got a great one. Hard hitting journalism, BYU people. Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Football in Utah is all about the rivalries. Red, blue, quarterback, wide out, rewards. Wait, what? My style, checking rewards. My style, right. For Mountain America's My Style Checking, it's all about the benefits. Loan discounts. But it's hard to pick a favorite. No, mobile phone protection. Tell the hell. You're going to need that when we're done. 
I heard that. Let's go. Yet the account rivaled by no one. My style checking from Mountain America. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. At BYU, we believe wholeheartedly in expanding joy, and that joy comes from learning and serving. Some of the best, most lasting learning happens when we serve, when we experience, when we connect in real, lasting ways. It's what we call inspiring learning. Learning that inspires us to create a better world, to do and be better. After all, light shared is the best kind of light. Before I was a coach at BYU, or before I was even a player, I was a BYU fan. We've got great energy as a team, but we have even better energy because of our fans, and it's absolutely magical. When you hear the crowd roar, that makes it more exciting, more of an adrenaline rush. The roar of the crowd, you can feel it on the floor, you can feel that energy, and it's unlike anywhere else in the country. BYU sports, it's all about the fans. This is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get great content throughout the day, follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. If you don't know his name yet, it's Jason Shepard. I am Spencer Linton. And if you're new to the program, this is typically where we whip it. Cougar Whip Around, presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. All right, how about we uh, throw out some numbers here? Let's do it. BYU finishes 51st in the athletics ranking of the 131 college football team. 51st! Yeah, 51st. Is that fair? <laughs> and when you look at the season as a whole? Yeah, totally. Like, I'll, I'll tell honestly, I mean, I, I joke with the excitement in my voice about being number 51. Yeah. But yeah. From where BYU was at four and five, Jason. Yeah. But then we're going to finish in the bottom half of college football and not make a bowl game. Like, to get to eight and five, win four in a row, finish number 51. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm printing out shirts. We're 51st. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's great. And for the reason that you said, you, you, you go from where it was to where it ended up. Yeah, that's pretty good. Is, is the number 51 t-shirt going to be available in Jason Shepard's Renta swag? Uh, it is, <laughs> and it will be available in both Navy and in <laughs> Jamal Williams, only one size, though, Schmedium. <laughs> Jamal Williams is named the NFC Offensive Player of the Week. Awesome. Led the NFL in rushing touchdowns this season with 17. Of course, went over 1,000 yards. And broke Barry Sanders' single-season touchdown rushing record. How will he capitalize on this year's success for next season because he's a free agent? Yeah. See, I didn't realize he was a free agent. I had no idea that he's going to be on the open market. The way he's going to capitalize on it is he's going to cash in. Okay. okay. When you lead the league in rushing touchdowns, especially... When you when you were given the opportunity to to really be the guy, and I understand you know Swift also had carries, but he really took over when they they wanted and needed a running back to carry the ball. It was Jamal, and so he proved he could carry the load and produce. I don't know if he goes to Detroit. I'm certainly sure at the right price they want him back. Oh but my gosh! He's yes. going to capitalize financially on this, and he should. Let's put a number value to that because I did the research, and right now Jamal is. Somewhere between the number 17 and number 20 best running back in the NFL, mm -hmm. according to On3, that's worth roughly $4.1 million per year, which would be more than a million dollars per year raise for Jamal Williams. I think the Detroit Lions are going to give him more than that. I think they're going to give him probably two more years and probably $5 million a year. So, well, and it's all about the signing bonus, too, because that's your only guarantee. Absolutely. But, yeah, I mean, I would certainly think that the Detroit Lions would want to keep him oh in my the gosh. and build off of what they did. He's the most likable person yes. in the game, and he's now producing. Yes. Uh, why would you not? Detroit would be crazy not yeah. to re-sign Jamal Williams. Five right. million a year. Take it. I'll take it. I don't know if Jamal will. I will. <laughs> okay. All right. Yesterday during media availability, Mark Pope had some thoughts on Gonzaga's Drew Timmy still being a part of the Gonzaga program. 
friggin' Drew Timmy is, I mean, how many years does he have left? Uh, just go be a pro already. Um, so, the, yeah, maybe. So, so they, uh, you know, he, he is, he's been the, the, you know, face of that program for a decade, it seems like. And, um, and he just is, he's one of the best players in the country. And he does it his own way. And he does it in a way that nobody has successfully figured out. If you had to guess, what year did Drew Timmy graduate high school? Well, knowing that he has another year after this year, Which Jason, if he wants to come back. Yeah. How wild is that? Yeah, I know. Uh, what, 02? <laughs> I was going to say 1983. <laughs> so. No, I feel like he's been at Gonzaga forever. Yeah, technically... And this is, because, this is the credit to him because he was so good when he came in as a freshman. Yeah. He looked like a polished veteran player, and he looks older anyway. So his freshman year, he looked like a veteran. 2019 is the answer. 2019 right? is when he graduated from yeah. high school. So it's, hasn't been, hasn't been out of high school that long, but it, it feels like he's been at Gonzaga. Seriously, as Mark Pope said, for like at least six years. He's been there so long, people are calling him mature. Old man Timmy. Ken Palm currently has Drew Timmy and Gonzaga, a four-point favorite. Only a four-point favorite. 77-73 is the score he's projecting against BYU, giving the Cougars 34% chance of winning the game. How do you feel about the odds for BYU in that regard? I am shocked that it's that small. I would not have expected it to be a four-point favorite for Gonzaga. I would have expected to at least be double that. So I, I don't know if they're doing that based off of the fact that Gonzaga, Gonzaga has played some close games recently, yeah, yeah. or they like what they see out of BYU's 1-7 of 8. I, I'm not sure why, but I'll, I'm certainly happy to see it. I'm sure that all factors into it. Given what Gonzaga has gone through over the past week, and that's a tough road swing at San Francisco and at Santa Clara against two teams that are pretty good now yeah. in the West Coast yeah. Conference. You find a way, but now you got to come to the toughest road venue, arguably, along with the McKeon, or yeah, McKeon Pavilion uh, at St. Mary's, to come and play a basketball game. Like, this, this is a tough road stretch for Gonzaga, so I get it. I'd probably put the line at about eight points. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured it would start at. Four feels favorable to BYU. Let's go. I, I would take it. All right. Rebecca Ripley's Barbie Girl floor routine this is from awesome. their meet in Las Vegas last week has gone viral. Yeah. Uh, it's been tweeted out by ESPNW and now featured by People Magazine. Love it. Can you believe that? If you missed it, here's just a small taste. <laughs> the movements yeah but that's incredible by the way that song has been in my head this entire show because we were playing this a little earlier just to like go over the video it's been in, stuck in my head and now that's just reinforced it <laughs> well this brings up a bigger conversation jason because a few years ago it was shannon hortman evans and her super mario routine yeah. if you forgot it Here's a little bit of that that went viral and got picked up by all the magazines and all the social media accounts. How do you argue oh, against Mario? All right, okay, okay, so that's the question. We've now seen and heard both routines that went viral. Which one is your favorite? I'm going with my girl Shannon Horman Evans. That Super Mario routine, it, and it was because she was an All-American at BYU. Rebecca's awesome. If Rebecca becomes an All-American and does so with that floor routine, no less, now we're talking in the same category. For me, that Mario routine, just who Shannon Evans was as a gymnast, an All-American, she, she takes the cake. Uh, look, I'm going with that one simply because it was Super Mario. You're a Mario guy? I love Mario to this day. <laughs> the greatest Christmas gift I have ever received was my original Nintendo back yes. in 1985. Well done, Shepard family, for delivering. That's what I'm saying. Making that a magical Christmas for yes. you. Yes, that, that, is, not, that is, is nothing against Barbie Girl or the routine, but I, I gotta go Super Mario Brothers. Finally, the okay. tube guys at the Marriott Center, the inflatable yes. flapping guys to distract free throw shooters from opponents, right? Yes. 
Well, they need names, Jason. Okay. 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 Especially before tomorrow night's game against Gonzaga. So what should we name the tube guys? Yeah, and they're naming them tomorrow. They're they're naming them at the game. It's gonna happen. So they're gonna so I have two options. And I'm going back, speaking of 1985, I'm going back to the 80s for both of mine. Okay? <laughs> My first, uh, so my first suggestion is uh, Hans and Franz. <laughs> I think that could be pretty good. And then the one I really, really like, and I know our producer Ben Bagley is going to love this one as well, Tango and Cash. <laughs> okay. This is Brigham Young University. I'm going to channel my inner Jerem Jordan here and go deep religious roots with this one. It's Brigham Young University. Okay. He had two counselors in his first first presidency. Oh wow. Jason. They were Heber C. Kimball and Willard Richards. It should be Heber and Willard. Come on! <laughs> I feel horrible that I went with Tango and Cash, and, and he went with <laughs> Heber and Willard. Let's go. Come on, I'm man. such a bad person. All right. <laughs> Join us Thursday for BYUSN Game Day ahead of BYU and Gonzaga on ESPN and BYU Radio. 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can join Tyler, Blaine, Spencer, and Jerem. I'll see if I can get an interview with old man Timmy. Stand by on that. Sean Farnham's going to be on the show tomorrow. That's, that's fun. Uh, newest Deep Blue coming up featuring Rudy Williams and his winding, lengthy path to Provo. How did he get here? This is BYU Sports News. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. feel small. Three, two, one, go! Have regrets? I guess we all have them. And trust. That's tough to earn. Or regain. You are the winner of survival! Glad we're doing this. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live in Studio B. The road from his hometown of Hamilton, Ontario in Canada to Provo has been a long winding one for BYU guard Rudy Williams. And one he hopes was worth it to change the future of his family. I'm not fond of losing, honestly. You know, I feel like, you know, life has all been about a competition Copy. and I kind of learned that as a young age. You know, some people make it, some people don't. I grew up in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, and it's just, it was tough growing up, you know, you had to be tough there. I come from a big family. It's my mom, and then I have two sisters, and then I have four brothers, so I'm the middle child. I'm number three. He wouldn't want to eat more than what he's not supposed to eat so that the others can always have something to, like, he, he looks out for them, you know, because he don't want where to be, to be out of certain things and stuff like that. I was uh, probably 11 or 12 years old, and it was just tough, you know, we got put out, and um, we had to live in a homeless shelter for about half the school year. 
he kind of took up sports to kind of distract him from certain things, you know, because it wasn't easy for us growing up. You know, nothing was given to you. There was no handouts in anything, life, sports. You know, everything I've ever gotten in my life growing up, it was earned. His upbringing, you know, basically, you know, we had, we had our, two, our two parents basically always worked, and it was just like pretty much us looking out for one another. I kind of learned how to work hard due to my family. Anything you want, you have to go and get it on your own. After he finished grade 10, he decided that he's going to go to the States. I said, why, why are you going to go to the States? Oh, because he wants to go to a prep school. I said, you cannot go to the States. It's how you're going to get there anyway, you know? He knew that there was definitely more opportunities over there. He knew if he wanted to play basketball to the next level, he had to leave Canada to make that happen. He already talked to the coach and do everything on his own already in order how to get there. He left here where we live and moved to Florida. Luckily, we had family over in Florida that he was able to stay with at the time, right? And then after he left Florida, it was just like, you know, it was prep schools and these prep schools, you gotta pay. You know, you gotta pay, pay, pay. We had hit a lot of roadblocks trying to help him on his journey. I feel like a lot of people had helped him. Like a lot of people helped him on the way because they realized he was talented. People liked being around him, so people were willing to help him. Everybody's basketball path has some twists and turns, and Rudy is no different. He started in junior college, then he went to Kansas State, ended up at Coastal Carolina, and now he's here at BYU. And each spot has presented different challenges, but in each spot, Rudy has had to prove who he is as a basketball player, and we are so excited to be able to get the culmination of that here at BYU. When we went to Utah, everything felt so perfect. Everything felt right. The support from the coaching staff, the atmosphere in Utah. And I felt like BYU was the right fit for him because they actually cared to see him develop and grow into a better player. He's still got room to grow in many areas, but I really feel that's why he chose Coach Pope and decided, right, with a lot of Coach Fieger's earnestness in the recruiting process, that this was going to be the best place for him to be able to advance his career from a basketball perspective. We see him in the gym every single morning, right, late at night, and we're super excited to see where he can grow individually, but also where he can take us. You know, we, we talk about Rudy's work ethic. We talk about his smile. We talk about the joy that he brings into a room. And Rudy's been through a lot of things in his life that would have made it very easy for none of those things to be true. And he would have had good reason. There was days where I really wanted to come back home and stuff like that, but I, I knew what my goal was, my end goal was to become a Division One basketball player. And I, I told myself, even on the hard days, I was like, listen, like if this is what you really want to do, you got to fight every day, you know, you just got to make it work, you know. That's always kind of been my motto growing up is, you know, just kind of finding a way to make it happen. A lot of people get changed by their circumstances to the point where maybe you don't even recognize them anymore. Rudy has always stayed Rudy. He's, he's focusing right now on what he wants to accomplish and what he needs to accomplish. He's literally doing this because he, one, loves basketball, but two, he wants to put a smile on his mom's face. If I help BYU, Will help them win a lot of ball games. They're gonna help me get to where I need to be, which will ultimately me be playing pro. That'll ultimately change my family's life, and it's gonna help them have, you know, the opportunity to just live the way we've never gotten to live ever in my life. I feel like that's why I go so hard because I know that if I do this and I accomplish this goal, then I can change not only mine but my family's life. I'm very proud, you know, because in these days and age, not a lot of kids in their age group doing the right thing. I wish him very well, and I, I hope that whatever he do in life, his dreams will fulfill. Deep Blue with the engaging Rudy Williams. Coming up, a rise and shout out to current and past awesomeness on BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere.
Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. BYU men's hoops dreams are flying high, but before hitting the hardwoods of the Big 12, they're shooting to leave their royal blue imprint on the courts of the WCC. Join us for BYU Sports Nation game day as we chat it up with Coach Pope on the team's growth, dive deep into player profiles, and keep it real on the Cougs' big dance chances. It's time to raise the spirited Y banner on our final tour of the WCC. BYU Sports Nation game day. Tune in, join us. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU radio apps uh, and listen to the podcast. Our question of the day, do you feel BYU football is a net positive or negative in the transfer portal? Our elite voice of the day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated comes from the Croxall on Insta who says, if I'm being honest, it probably doesn't matter that much. Just look at Texas A&M for proof. Just go and win games in the fall. We all want wins, Jason. That's what it's, it all boils down to. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Who should we give it to? How about the, uh, how about the running back situation? The, the current running backs, past running backs, future running backs yes. from BYU. Aiden Robbins. Been up, upgraded to a four-star rating. Fantastic. So congratulations to him. Jamal uh, is now the NFC Offensive Player of the Week. And Tyler Algier, PFF All-Rookie Team today. How about that for awesome. some BYU running backs? And, and listen, if BYU beats Gonzaga tomorrow and it's because of the Blues bros or the Blue Tube guys, then they probably deserve a rise shout-out. you got I'd, a great name, though. I'd like to submit for consideration Layman and Lemuel. <laughs> we have our winner. We have our winner. <laughs> our thanks to today's guest. Greg Rubel. I apologize to absolutely no one for that. Drop the mic. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Make sure you check out BYUSN.com. For Jason, I'm Spencer. Shout out to Taylor Mon as well. We'll see you tomorrow on BYUSN. Go Cougs.